So in this tutorial, we are going to use P5.js to create a pixelator that's going to take a webcam video feed and pixelate the image. So when someone describes an image as being pixelated, it's usually a way to say that the image resolution is too low. However, there is a really long history of pixelizing an image intentionally. Sometimes it's done as an act of censorship, and sometimes it's to protect someone's privacy or intellectual property. Artists have created other interpretations of pixelizations. So for instance, in this online game, 232 Henley by Lee Tussman, Pixelization is used as a way to express the gradual loss of memory. So let's jump to our P5 editor and learn how to create this pixelator. So now I have my webcam connected to my P5 sketch and I've also added a couple lines um, that just initiate create capture. Now to make my image show up, in preview, I have to add image capture zero, zero width and height. So if I hit play, there it is, it's a little distorted. We can deal with that later. Um, and the next thing I want to introduce you all is the P5 default function called copy. So copy is a function that is going to let us copy a portion of the source image that I have over here and paste it back onto the canvas. The parameters that copy takes is really, really long. <laughs> there are many, many param parameters that's supposed to go inside of copy. So what I have to do is write copy. And I would say the first parameter is the source of your image. In this case, it's capture. And the second parameter is the X position of your source. So starting from which X position do you want to start copying the image from the source? So here I'm going to create a variable called SX and the second is SY, Y position from the source. And the next one is S width. So the, the width of that region you want to copy from the source and SH height. So, so we already have five different parameters. Um, it needs four more. So the next parameter is dx, which is of the x position for your destination of where you want to paste that image to. And of course, again, dy and d width and d height. So that was a ton. Um, now we just gotta go to the top of our sketch and actually declare these variables and assign some values to them. So here I'm gonna say SX and I'm gonna start, let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to grab part of um, my, my lovely bottle over here and I'm gonna try to grab part of that image, part of that yellow and, and paste it back onto the canvas. So I'm gonna guess something like 300 pixel is maybe where we start and let SY 300 pixel. I'm just gonna note here, this is source X, source Y. And for that, I think I'll try um, maybe 100 source width and source height. And for the destination, I'm gonna quickly also put dx equals 50, dy equals 50, 
the width equals 100, the height equals 100. Just gonna put all my explanation in here so that it's super clear. All right, so let's try to play this. Um, so, so if I try to play this, I do not see anything being copied. And, and the reason for that is because the capture image is constantly being updated and that update is go on, always going to make the feed um, override any other, any other drawings um, that's underneath it. So the best way to deal with this problem is using create graphics to create a second layer that capture cannot interfere with. So I'm gonna go back to the top and create let CG. And inside setup, I'm going to say CG equals create graphics with height. And over here, I'm going to say CG dot copy. So now the, the function copy belongs to the layer CG. And don't forget for create graphics, you always have to like draw it out using the image function. So here I'm going to say image CG zero zero with height. And I'm going to hit play and yay, there it is. <laughs> so we were able to copy a part of the bottle and a region of our source image and paste it back onto itself. All right, so, so this is only the first step. Um, we still have to create a pixelator um, using the copy function. And if we think about how, might, how this might be done, um, essentially what we need is creating a sequence of copies. Um, more, more specifically, a grid of like copied images. And we're going to reconstruct like a series of copied image into the arrangement of a grid. And they're all going to be offset a little bit in some ways so that like we create this like illusion of pixelation. So I'm going to, um, delete the image capture line so that we just have what's in front of it. And I'm also going to, to undo this extra layers we have and just simplify. I'm going to delete the CG layer and we're just going to simplify so that we just have to copy. So I'm going to hit play and everything should still play. So now I'm going to put this copy function into a nested for loop. So I'll say for let i equals zero, i smaller than, let's just say, let's just make five copies for now, i plus plus, let j equals zero, j smaller than five, j plus plus. So let's hit play. And when we do that, we would see essentially multiple copies of the images overlapping on top of one another. So, so this is where we can start offsetting things. So in order to offset things, um, we're going to have to mess with the source X, source Y, destination X, and destination Y. Let's start with the destination X. So what I'm going to do here is that inside of our for loop, I'm going to say dx equals dw times 
i and dy equals dh times j. So, so if I play that, what I'm going to get is this grid of um, the same image over and over again, right? And it's repeated, but it's not quite the effect of pixelation yet. Um, so, so I'm I'm gonna do one more, give it one more step to also alter um, the the region that we're copying the source image from. So, I'm gonna say xx equals to sw times i and sy equals to sh times j. I'm gonna hit play again. So, so what's happening now is that we are, we are grabbing the images sequentially and placing them back <laughs> as um, copies, also sequentially. And, and now maybe um, instead of just coming up with a random number to produce like five different copies of the original image, we can be a little more specific here. So what I can say here is width divided by dw. And over here, I can say height divided by dh. So it's gonna come up with the perfect exact number for how many copies of images we need to make here. So I'm gonna hit play again here. And, and the next thing we gotta do is maybe using some, some ways of offsetting the width and the height and make a sort of dramatic, dramatic differences between like the width and height of the source versus the destination. And that's really going to help us come up with that pixelated look. So here I'm going to say let offset equals 120. And I'm going to hit play. Oh, and not to forget, I need to also add the offset into the copy. So what this does is that every time the image is copied, um, the, the width and the height of the destination image is also gonna be changed and offset it. So when I play, it sort of like creates this kind of like gridded image with gaps, huge gaps in between. Um, let's go up here. So here I'm going to tweak a couple numbers inside of our variables. Um, so that it matches the, the setup and the test that I've done prior to this tutorial. So I'm going to not define the source X and source Y and destination X and Y in the beginning. Since under here, the X and Y for both categories are defined by the width and height of the region that we're trying to copy. And here I'm going to change source width and source height and destination width and destination height to 2020. So there you go, a pixelated image. Um, the numbers I have is definitely not a golden standard by any means. It's just numbers that I have tweaked around and worked for me. Um, you can obviously try to tweak these numbers yourself and try to figure out how those different adjustment is going to change the way things are pixelated. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.